guys and welcome back to my review of the Scorpion by KWA. Now I tried recording this a few minutes ago and my battery died. So I pulled up a new battery and it's full charged. Um, last time I, God there's a lot of sirens going off. And last time I tried to do this recording I slipped and fell. I injured myself pretty badly. It still hurts a little bit, but not enough to really require any painkillers or anything. Compared to for the first few days, I needed painkillers. I ended up going to urgent care by us and they gave me a little bit of help, and now I'm all better. Anyhow, let's talk about the markings. You've got your typical KWA. Trying to angle this so you can see it. Made in Taiwan, or manufactured in Taiwan, excuse me. And then on the other side, I do not know if that is a unique serial number or not. And this is the six KZ61 pistol, carbureted in the 6.00 millimeter. That there is your fire selector switch. Towards the back of the gun is semi-auto, and towards the front of the gun is full auto reason it says 20 is well because it comes with a 20 round magazine. Now, this gun, when I picked it up, I got for 190. It came with the magazine, the gun, and everything else. First off, let's take a look at the magazine. Now, as we can see, it's nothing special. It's just a simple banana clip style magazine. Right here is where you pull down with the spring. Now my only complaint is that if you let it go all the way up, it's a real bitch to get up from that to come down. You'll have to use a screwdriver flathead or a quarter to sit there and pull it out because it gets real stuck right about here. Using all my force and I can't get it to go down. So in a minute, I'm going to fill this up with BBs and then I'll have to use a screwdriver to put it down. So I'll put this down. Let's talk about the sights. The sights are unadjustable for height or elevation, but you can flip that down for better sightage. However, you cannot move it side to side. The front sight is your typical scorpion sight. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Now, as you can see, the handle is movable. Doing that makes it a full CZ. Now, to put it back, all you have to do is pinch these two things, flop it forward, give it a little bit of pressure, and boom. Now, I talked about the tip in my video. It's just painted on. So honestly, a little bit of hot water will get it off. So if you really want to get an authentic CZ, you can. Now the upper is made out of metal, and this gun is a hefty son of a bitch. The grip is made of polymer, and it's not that cheap piece of crap polymer that you see a lot of companies use, like WeTech. And yes, I did get to use a WeTech gun at one point, just shooting with a friend, and it broke on us within the first couple of hours just shooting. We weren't even in a game, it was just us to display shooting cans. Now, I do not know how to take this thing apart. I'm not going to risk breaking it, trying it. Look up a YouTube video. Don't be lazy and require that every single review require a um, takedown guide. However, when I do my M9 review, I will know how to take it down and I can show you and then put it back together. I believe, however, it is just a couple of pins that are holding it in place. Now, I need to show, so now we'll do a shooting test. Let me take you over, put you down. Try to center this. As centered as it's gonna get. Now, here are the three targets. 
We shoot at the small sandbox, which is the very front of the picture. A little ways back is a plastic swing set, which is about 10 feet from the sandbox. We are about 100 feet from the sandbox. Actually, not 100, about 50 feet from the sandbox, and we're about 70 feet from the swing set. For this test, I will be doing 2.25 gram BBs with Valken's Green Gas. Our Valken Tactical Green Gas. Give me a second here, I gotta fuck with this metal bit. There. There we go. And if you wanna know what I use as my, my emergency tool, I'll show you guys later on in another review. But for now, let's gas her up, let's beat her up, and let's fire a nice accuracy test. Mind you, I don't have my glasses on, but when I shoot my guns, I don't use my glasses. And yes, I do wear glasses. However, it's not for everything. It's for faraway sights. Like, I can't see, like... I can't give you exact details on the birdhouse by our windmill, which I'll shoot at that too, because that's about 300 feet away. Actually, that's about 100, 150. I always got to double take myself, so I'm not exaggerating anything. Now, I will be doing a review on my Classic Army P90. However, that might be in a few weeks because I've got to wait for a new battery to come in. I do not wish to use my 11.1 LiPo in there because of the fact that it does break the gears. Mind you that the P90 does not come LiPo ready. However, my AUG that I got, which is I believe a JG Army, I got it used from a good friend of mine, which I will do a review on too. It, however, came okay but I'm going to use the 8.4 volt as well in it to actually shoot it. I'm gassing up the KWA Scorpion now. It's perfect. First we will do the magazine at semi-auto, so a controlled fire rate. Then we will do full auto. First off, we'll shoot at the sandbox. Next up, we'll aim for the swing set. Now I'm going to aim to go through the holes and hit the very back wall of the swing set. So that way people can say, well, it's such a big target. Those two square holes are about as big as my chest. So they're about human sized chest torso. I'm going to be shooting one hand at first. Nope. 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 Now two handed. Nope. There we go. Finally, let's do the windmill. And you guys do have a picture of it, but it's real faded. Ooh. Ran out of gas, and no, it could not reach the windmill. Sadly to say, this gun's max range is probably around 70 feet. That's where you're more so going to exactly hit your target. Now that's not to say that you can't lob your BBs, but however, I'm not going to sit here and lob my BBs and waste BBs. 
I would much rather be an incredibly accurate target shooter. Now we are about to do full auto. Again, BB it up and gas it up and then we shoot. Now I need to warn you, this thing guzzles gas like a hog. It's like a semi truck. It can't go through a whole full magazine. Now I find on average on a full mag, I get to the last three shots on full auto before the gas runs out. But that's not to say this gun isn't worth the money. Is it worth it? To be honest with you, if you're looking for something that's going to be a bigger pistol for someone like me who has big hands, it's worth the $190 price. Might be $200 on websites. However, would I suggest this to anyone who has smaller hands or doesn't have enough muscle build up in their arms? No, I would not suggest that. Also, if you're looking just for a fun little gun to take that on the field, something that's a little different than a KWA MP9 or like... The other gas bolt X. This is also something for you to look at. However, if you're looking to make this a long range pistol, it's not going to happen out of the box. However, I could see after some upgrades, it being good in woodland gameplay. However, it is CQB where this will be most successful in. I'm gassing her up. That bear got through a whole mag. Maybe it's temperature difference, whatever. As you can tell, it has a ridiculous rate of fire. I'm gonna load one more magazine. <laughs> This does have a lot of kick. This here is going to demonstrate to you how the blowback system works. Now this does lock in place, just like the real steel version, when you are out of ammo. Alright, now we are to demonstrate the gas blowback idea. What the hell is happening? Is it like a big fire or something? Anyhow, as you can see, it is now open, and when I do this, it closes. Now we'll demonstrate the gas blowback part. Now for full auto. Full mag. I'm 
Make sure the chamber's clear. Throw on safety. Another thing to note, when your gun is on safety, which is the middle, when you, you can't pull it back. But on full auto or semi, you can pull it back. Now the charging handle is ambidextrous, meaning you can get access to it from the left or right. Safety, however, is not. The mag release is this button right here, and it simply releases the magazine. So is the gun worth it? Well, like I said, if you're looking just to ping some targets, use it for CQB, or you're looking for a different type of pistol, I say yes, the 190 price tag is not that bad. Now, if you're looking for a woodland gun, or you're not looking to ping some targets, you're just looking to have it completely for play, it's a gas hog, so it wouldn't be worth it. I suggest if you're going to use this for play, use it for CQB. That's where it's going to reign supreme and it's going to really kick some ass. This has been Airsoft Fatty and I'm signing out.